The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the session, Migration from OSP to Karuda, uh, Proof of Concept. Uh, today, our panelists are Jenna Smith, Jacques Renaud, and Olivier Gerb. Uh, I hope I'm pronouncing those correctly. Uh, Janice has been involved with the open source portfolio, the OSP tools in Sakai since their creation at the University of Minnesota in the mid-1990s. She has extensive use uh, and expertise in teaching and learning to consult on a wide variety of portfolio projects in higher education. She led the portfolio visioning process within the Sakai community and is currently project lead for the Karuda Open Source Portfolio Incubation Project. Jacques? holds the rank of professor, occupies the chair of learning and teaching technologies and management education, and is director of the Department of Applied Economics at HEC Montreal. He has been the functional lead on the Caruda project at HEC Montreal since its inception. Olivier is an associate professor in the Department of Information Technologies at HEC Montreal. He is the chief architect and head developer for the Caruda open source portfolio. So welcome to you three, and just to give you uh, all some housekeeping of how this is going to work, you're all on mute. There is a questions button, which uh, I will be monitoring, and uh, uh, and so please put your questions in there, and we'll either address them during the session or towards the end. We're going to stay uh, on time, so it's a 45-minute uh, session, and if you have any problems with audio or video, also enter those in the questions box. This session is being recorded and will be available at a later date on the Aperio uh, YouTube channel. And with that, I will now uh, turn this over to Janice. Janice, give me just a second here to make sure you are a presenter. And you should now have the ability to, uh, to share your uh, information. Okay, can you, okay, I'm almost, there we go. All right, can you see my uh, screen? Yes. It looks great. Welcome, everyone. Uh, again, we're going to be talking about migration of content from OSP to Karuda, a proof of concept. And I'm happy to be joined by Jacques Reynaud and Olivier Gerbet from HEC Montréal. We are going to address four, to four important questions in our session. First, a very brief overview of how portfolios enhance learning and how portfolios work in OSP, just as a review for those of you who are either unfamiliar with portfolios or with OSP. Then we'll be discussing how Karuda can improve upon OSP and how one can migrate content from OSP to Karuda. So to review, there are three types of portfolios. Portfolios for learning, which focus on developing academic or professional identity, and Karuda excels particularly in learning portfolios. Karuda is building functionality for assessment to focus on programmatic or institutional improvement, and showcasing, focusing on sharing evidence with others. To review, learning portfolios are guiding the learning process for individuals and groups allowing documentation and reflection over time with a structured workflow and an encouragement of self-evaluation and involve a workflow that where users can receive feedback from instructors and peers. Assessment portfolios build on learning portfolio process by collecting multimedia evidence of learning and linking that learning to learning out evidence to learning outcomes. Assessment portfolios reuse rubrics for evaluation, and there is a reporting process for aggregating and analyzing data and, and identifying representative artifacts. Showcase portfolios focus on the individual user who is creating a presentation about him or herself and managing virtual identity. They involve a creative element, and they can be shared with many different other entities for purposes of future employment or admission to graduate school or participating in a professional organization. All of these types of portfolios involve certain skills that must be supported by the portfolio process and taught through the portfolio process. 
These include collecting evidence, self-regulating in relation to learning, reflecting on evidence of learning, integrating that evidence across context, and collaborating with others to build knowledge and skills. And these uh, portfolio learning skills lead to success in learning, but also success in life. The open source portfolio tools are an inter interoperable tool suite for flexible workflows. They're, uh, the, the, the lamented disadvantage is the customization of this portfolio process involves XML coding in some instances, although there are other instances with user interface development. Uh, the OSP process focuses on the portfolios tool and the matrices tool that link with other tools to provide self-representation and assessment. And then there is also a reporting process to gather up the data from the learning and self-presentation. The primary focus of OSP work is the matrix in which you can link learning outcomes to a work process where students collect evidence of their learning and reflect upon it and receive feedback and evaluation from mentors or instructors or peers. It uses a set of cells, each of which has a workflow related to the learning outcome and related to the activities and uh, rubrics that are involved in the learning process. These, these cells make use of forms which collect structured data, attachments, and other information about learning to use in presenting in a portfolio or gathering evidence in a report. So the OSP process has been improved upon by the Karuta Open Source Portfolio, which is more flexible, does not require coding, and can be integrated with Sakai and other LMSs through LTI-1 and LTI-2. Our project seeks to create community around the continued use of portfolios in Sakai, and as Neil mentioned, we've, we're building upon the visioning process that took place over several years at Open Aperio and Sakai conferences. We're exploring the use of LTI-1 and LTI-2 to provide services between Karuta and Sakai, and we're seeking to become a viable open source organization through the Aperio incubation process. There are four participants in our project so far, and we invite additional participants who wish to contribute to what we're doing. You're going to meet shortly the participants from HEC Montreal in Canada. We also have uh, a strong contingent from IUT2 Grenoble in France, from two graduate programs at Kyoto University in Japan, and then I represent Three Canoes LLC from the USA. We have six pilots running with a great many participants, uh, three, two in Quebec, uh, one in Grenoble, and two in Kyoto. Our incubation process involves mentoring by esteemed Aperio mentors, um, getting our licenses in order, both inbound and outbound, uh, trademarking of Karuta, managing the release process, and we just released Karuta 1.0 at the end of September. Community development, we're seeking to reinvigorate the Sakai portfolio community. And project governance, and then managing a number of uh, resources involving distribution of code, tracking bugs, mailing lists, and a website. But all of this does not guarantee quality code. This is the task for the Karuta open source community. I'm now going to turn it over to Jacques and Olivier for a demonstration of the Karuta open source portfolio. We're getting a noise on the line. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, well, Jacques, go ahead. I'm not okay, hearing oh, uh, the noise that you are, but sorry. What, what kind of noise are you hearing? Like a regular clicking noise. Click, 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 click. Yeah, but it's 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 gone now. Uh, hello everyone, welcome to uh, uh, this uh, presentation. I will just uh, give you a quick glimpse about uh, Keruta portfolio. 
and how it works. Of course, I can uh, do a full demo uh, in such a short time, so but I, I will give you much of the flavor. So, as you, as Janice presented, uh, we we sort of continue on the USP spirit, and basically we provide an environment where you can organize different resources, uh, text, document, rubrics, comments, whatever, according to a workflow for different users, and of course for learning, assessment, guidance, reporting, or presentation. So this is, for us, the key about a, a, a portfolio success is to make sure to match the needs of the uh, of the school or the user, and make sure that we sort of uh, adapt. Uh, the, the the tool is flexible enough to adapt. So yeah, can you move on, Janice? Yeah, and the thing that we really learn over the years is that, uh, as I said, no one portfolio is the same, and you really have to have flexibility and be able to prototype and you know improve upon what you've been doing. So again, you need something really flexible. Uh, the approach we use with the partner schools is the following. I mean, Caruta is really can be used. I mean, the first step is uh, what we call the designer. It's some someone that is knowledge, knowledgeable in teaching and learning. This is not a developer. This is something that is someone that is really uh, uh, comfortable with uh, using technology tool. So he's the one who is going to design the first portfolio. So I will show you a little bit later how the designer can can do that. But again. 95% of the of the task of creating a portfolio can be done by a designer. So no developer involved at this early stage. Then you can quickly use uh, uh, Karuta to move to a small pilot. Uh, it's very easy. You can have like 10, 15 students. Try you know using your 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 portfolio. You can get feedback. And the good thing is that you can make changes. So it will improve upon what you've done. And finally, you can go on and move to production. OK. So I will show you how to. This is a sort of a generic page for a portfolio, just to give you a bit of uh, information about our language and how we approach that. So on the left hand side, you have like. A menu where you you have like different elements, and we have, have like what we call structure. Uh, I mean, let's take for example the portfolio to be a kind of book. It's the whole portfolio is a book, and you can see me that in the book you will have chapters, you will have pages, you will have sections. So this is what basically the the idea about uh, the way we organize things. So in this is what we're going to replicate. In this case, we have like three elements, three chapters, what we call three elements of structure. You'll have a couple page uh, in the structure one. So this is the, the, the page one is displayed on the right hand side of the, 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 the slide. Within this page or unit or what we call unit, you have what we call unit structure. They are sort of sections. And within a section, you have resources. So in my in, in this page, you have like two unit structure, two sections, and three resources. Okay, so how you build a template or you know your prototype portfolio is is you start, for example, with a, a you start with a blank page. So this is the very unusual, but this is the way it goes. You've got a blank page, and you build your portfolio according to your needs and your uh, the goals you want to pursue. So first thing, you just add, you click on Add button on the right hand side, and you click on Add a structure. OK? Uh, and you just type in the, the name of the structure on the label, uh, on, the, on the label. So it's chapter one. So we can move on and save. And so you have the the, chap, the the structure one is created, and I want to add a unit. A unit is a, a page, if you recall. So okay, I've got my unit. I didn't go through the, all the steps because it's pretty much the same. I want to add a unit structure, so I, I add a unit structure here. And 
and then I can add different uh, resources which are specialized. So you can have, uh, we can have like what we call text field. It's like a, a block of text. You can have a field. It's like, it's like when you create a survey, you, you, you can use field. Uh, you can have documents, URL, calendar, images, video, comments, and uh, also embed resources. You know, when you have like YouTube, public YouTube, or SlideShare, or whatever resources, you can add them there as well. Uh, on the top right hand side, you see that uh, you'll have like, uh, all, you will, you'll have a pencil, you'll have an X, you'll have like uh, arrows. All these are tools that the designer can, can use to sort of customize, move things around, change things, uh, delete, uh, and sort of so that to move more uh, efficiently. So the end result will be if you change page, again, it's exactly the unit, uh, it's the, the structure that I presented before. So again, you can with this sort of very broad framework, you can create pretty much what you want, and it's real easy. You can you can do that. I mean, in uh, 20 minutes, you've got something up and running. I mean, if it's really simple. Of course, it's it's more complex. We have different tools that are not going to be able to show, but of course, they they are available. Uh, if we move to the next page, you'll see an example. For example, that is a bit more interesting for this audience. It's a sort of portfolio that you will often see in OSP type environment, but I guess elsewhere. Uh, on the left hand side, I've, uh, on the column, I put all the learning objectives of a program, for example, like written communication, information literacy, problem solving. Uh, and then I've got on the right hand side the unit which is about written communication. So what the page displays is, is something very, I mean, that you, typical in, the, in this kind of portfolio. For example, first you will explain what is written communication. So this is the part, the top part called explanation. You will then have a section where a student can submit evidence, uh, a, a file or something else. Uh, usually you will give instructions to the students on, on, on what to do and how to do that and what they should expect. So again, it's very easy to create these instructions in, in Karuta. You will then have another section or where the students will reflect on the evidence submitted. Again, you, you might want to give them some instruction. You want to give them uh, uh, so they can better reflect. This is where I, I don't show anything, but this is where you can, you know, provide a, a workflow where other students, peer, can can comment on on their colleagues. You can have like a tutor coming in. Uh, so many many possibilities again, depending on on what this what your school or what the program wants. And at the bottom, it's the evaluation, where. Uh, you will ask a tutor, or a faculty, or an instructor to sort of use uh, to evaluate. It could be by putting comments or by using rubrics. So I'm not going to be able to show how you can set up rubrics, but setting up rubrics in in Karuta is very easy. Uh, again, it's it's something that the the designer can do by himself or herself. Not nothing technical. Uh, no XML needed. So you. Just go on and, uh, and, uh, and 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 create these rubrics and insert them for uh, the evaluator. Something that is really important in Karuta and uh, it's not displayed for now is that there is there's an extensive control on what we call roles. Uh, it is very easy for the designer to say, for example, that only students can see uh, submit evidence or it's only students that can submit, or a student in this group, or other types of students. So there's a very, very f extensive control on, on that. Evaluator also is the same. So if you move, yeah, Janice, on the next slide. Uh, I think uh, for some reason it's missing, so. Uh, okay, no, no problem, but uh, I'm just going to say that if you click, for example, as a designer on, a, 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 on one resource, 
you will be able to uh, to see. Um, Maybe Janice, you can move on the presentation to me, and I can display that to the user. Okay. Perhaps we have some time. Uh, I'm not quite. I, I've, I've. I've. Uh, can you get it now, Jack? I think so. Can yep. you see that? Yeah. Okay, I'm moving up. Okay. Good. Let me. Can you see my slides? Yes, I can see your slides. Oops. Okay. Can you see it now? Yes. Okay. So again, it's this slide just displayed the fact that when you click on a resource, you have this kind of panel that come comes up, and you can set up. I mean, this is only part of what you can do. You can you can create a, a label. You can put a semantic tag. I will come back to that. But then you can at the at the end you can set up roles. So you can see you can you can specify who can see this resource, who can delete this resource, who can edit the resource. So it could be students. It could be a, a tutor. It could be instructor. You can have like many layers of of of, uh, of permissions so this is really something very powerful that can really tailor a workflow of course there are other possibilities but uh, I, I will not display them for now and finally I will end up uh, I will finish by talking about semantic tag semantic tag is a very powerful way to sort of customize and 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 really uh, use the portfolio in some very creative way because if you put a semantic tag and all semantic tags are unique when you put a semantic tag it means that you can reuse or or or, or bring this resource elsewhere in your portfolio so that it it is the way that you can get rubrics is you you go on and you create a special portfolio that may be called rubric and then you, you put the semantic tags that are uniquely identify the elements of your rubric. And when you go on into the as a designer in the portfolio, you can sort of go and get these elements back uh, in the uh, for the uh, for the evaluator or the instructor. So you can just click on on one of the element of the rubric rubric and, and use that as an evaluation. So the semantic tag are really, really powerful to, to create rubrics, to go and get parts of other portfolios, to display them in some other portfolio. So you can, you can, you can, it gives a, a, a tremendous flexibility. So I guess I, I will stop there, Janice, and give it back to you and maybe answer a question maybe at the end for people who want to know more about uh, how Karuta works. Neil, can you give me back the presenter role? Thank you. So how to migrate content from OSP to Karuta? When we talk about migration, there are several scenarios. The current effort of, for migration is focusing on constructing Karuta resources that act like OSP matrices, in other words, something in Karuta that looks like a matrix and acts like a form in OSP, and exporting OSP content to import to Karuta for reuse in those OSP-like structures in Karuta. A possible future effort might entail replicating all the structures of, from OSP and Karuta and populating them with OSP content, or all the functionality from OSP and Karuta. Right now, Karuta is created in the spirit of OSP, but it is not an e exact equivalent of OSP. So we're working on first how to move content, especially from OSP matrices and forms, and the attachments to those matrix cells and forms into Karuta. First, we need a migration map. So uh, we're in our test site, we're looking at forms that 
may or may not have, have attachments and matrix cells that may that may or may not have attachments. And uh, the focus of our effort is currently on content being held in a matrix. But we could also easily do that from a portfolio. In Karuda, we've now constructed a, something that looks like an OSP matrix. Um, if you can see the, the faint line, there's a, a column for two cells for OSP data, and then a, a column that could have uh, learning outcomes in it. Um, so let's move forward. An analogy would be as if we were moving our furniture from one apartment to another. So the trick is to uh, decide what you want to move. In this case, we're moving a chair. And um, lo relocate it in an, in an exact predictable place in the new apartment. So what are we trying to move? The content of form fields, for example, an evaluation where we're moving, we're moving the score that the student received along with the instructor comment. And we're trying to lo uh, move attachments to matrix cells and to form. Now these attachments are particularly problematic in that they are not, they, they may originate in Sakai resources or originate on the user desktop but they're actually stored in the OSP code. Um, I'll say more about that in the future. So we're using some uh, sample data to see whether we can pull things out of Karuda and, I'm sorry, out of OSP and locate them in Karuda. How are we doing this? Well, first we're using something called pass-through XSL to create a portfolio template in OSP. We're adding a matrix to that portfolio template. Those of you who do OSP may know that you can feature the content of a matrix in a portfolio to be shared with others in OSP. We're then having each user create the, uh, a, a, a portfolio from the context of their matrix, content of their matrix. Then we capture the XML for that portfolio and, ex and extract the attachments from Sakai using unique IDs in the XML and import the content of that XML consisting of content from forms and extracted attachments to Karuda. Uh, so in our proof of concept, we know that we can easily move con form content uh, in, the, in the form of the, all the fields and all the text from a form and we can move the link to the attachment that shows us where the content is in, o in OSP. In other words, the unique ID within Sakai OSP for each attachment. So our proof of concept is that we can move this, we can identify what needs to move, be moved in OSP, identify where it needs to be moved in Karuda, build a structure for that through the export-import, and relocate the content in Karuda. Our current problem, however, is we need to actually extract the attachments, not just have a location for them, but have the attachments themselves come over. And so that's our next step. We believe that it is doable, and we know we have experts in OSP who are re who will be available to uh, assist us in in locating and moving the attachments. Once we've done that, we can move the content of any matrix, any form, and any portfolio from OSP to Karuda. In the future, we will be experimenting with building structures in Karuda like like the like this matrix that look more like OSP and eventually uh, if there's sufficient interest a way to uh, replicate more of the current of the current OSP functionality in Cruda so we have a Wait. first step and we're very pleased with that effort yes someone else wants to talk Okay, um, Jacques, would you like to add in? Jacques or Olivier, would you like to add anything to the migration discussion?
Well, maybe Olivier. <laughs> okay. Um, no. Uh, <laughs> there's Olivier. Neil, do we have any questions? Neil? So it looks like we've reached the end of our session, and uh, without further questions, uh, we invite you to consider trying out Karuda. Karuda is available uh, if you go to the Aperio Hello? website. You, yes? Oh, sorry, Janice. I'm not sure why you couldn't hear me before. Um, we don't have any current questions, but uh, um, that's a good. I was just saying that's a good reminder. If anyone does have questions, to please put them in the questions area. Um, so sorry about that. I'm not sure why I didn't why I didn't come through the first time. Okay. So um, I'm ready to wrap up. Jacques, do you want to say anything before I do a, a little summary? Well, just to make sure that uh, yeah, we just released uh, Karuta 1.0. I mean, it's uh, uh, all the information is available on the uh, Aperio website. Uh, you can go to GitHub to get the information and also elsewhere. So I don't know if you have the all the address on your slides, uh, Janice. No, I'm afraid I've forgotten that. Um, but go to the Aperio website and look under projects for Karuta, and you'll be able to get to the important information. Yeah, and uh, I guess you, will, you were going to mention that, but we're looking for interesting use cases to migrate and actually uh, because, I mean, I know that many universities have invested quite of important resources in building interesting OSB portfolio cases. And it's, uh, and maybe you can talk a little bit about the future of OSP in Sakai. Sure. Um, so OSP is in Sakai 10, but will not be in Sakai 11. So we in the Karuta community are trying to create a pathway for OSP users to continue using Sakai. And this presentation shows our initial proof of concept for uh, being able to migrate all of your OSP data into Karuta. Uh, and I'm sorry. Uh, so we encourage uh, OSP schools to get involved in the Karuta project. A way that you could contribute would be, as Jacques suggests, contributing a use case for moving your OSP data and perhaps getting involved as a contributor to the process of moving that data. Uh, there are a number of us who would be happy to talk with you at any point about uh, becoming part of our project or finding out more about Karuta and we invite your questions at any time. We'll be giving another presentation for the Aperio uh, series of webinars on December 3rd. So if anyone has missed this presentation, they could join us at 12 noon on December 3rd. So thanks, Neil. Yes, thank, thank you. I appreciate it. Um, Janice and uh, Jacques and Olivier, uh, thank you very much for the presentation. Thank you for um, all who participated. Um, I guess we can wrap up now. Uh, we're ending a couple of minutes earlier than, uh, than planned, but that's fine. That gives people a little extra time for lunch. So right now we're heading into the lunch break for, uh, for the virtual conference, and the next sessions start at 1 p.m. Thanks, Neil. Thank you. Take care. Thanks. Thank you.